Time for another stock review. Very, very important one. For tonight, earnings after hours. We're looking at Broadcom, Avgo, and video investors. You've just probably come from my previous BS videos with, uh, with um, uh, NVIDIA. We're looking at this one right now because after hours, this could promote NVIDIA. People are watching this with all the nonsense that's gone on uh, with, uh, with NVIDIA and all the Bloomberg bad reporting and all the other stuff and all the links are below the video if you want to go and check and I'll give you all those links. But right now we're going to review Broadcom because we want to know, can this business do well after hours tonight? Is it a great business? And if it is uh, and it does well tonight, then NVIDIA is going to pop up and it could go straight back up to where we said and the 140 is just a blink of an eye because it's ultimately going to 200 bucks. But Broadcom is very very much connected and very relative and very, very timely because of everything that's gone on recently. The markets are turning very, very green again today. As you can see, no surprise that I'm up. Didn't sell a thing. Didn't need to buy either because it didn't go low enough. I'm already in to get to a million dollars. But let's look at Broadcom. Tap the like button if you like full deep dive analysis, real information, factual information, no BS, no drama. I refuse now to do interviews. I won't even do them. Uh, we talked about that earlier with uh, Bloomberg. Bloody rubbish. Here we go. So in this review, I'm going to share with you the intrinsic valuation. I'm going to share with you the balance sheet, the profit, the loss, the inside trading. I'm also going to uh, share with you um, some latest news uh, on a back test uh, as well. Also looking at the dividends, Broadcom offers a dividend. Also giving you the buy zone, sell zone, support levels, how you can trade this stock. Very important. Looking at the ratings from analysts, I'm an analyst on uh, Seeking Alpha. Don't take it as uh, as red, okay? Very important, that. Uh, why Broadcom should beat earnings again? We're going to look at that. Uh, NVIDIA is now in bear territory. We're going to talk about that. A lot of nonsense. One final lot of rubbish. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, City is, is still bullish on chips, despite everything that's been going on. Uh, and also the earnings ratings tonight. We're going to cover all of that information for you for so we are prepared as NVIDIA and Broadcom investors for tonight's earnings. So without further ado, full review. Let's go straight into it. Here we go. Here we go. This is the maximum line chart, just to show you it's got a very similar growth, and in fact, even better, perhaps. Not, a, not as much, but it uh, doesn't have the volatility as, uh, as uh, NVIDIA, but uh, nevertheless, a very nice stock. Looks a little bit like the S&P 500, doesn't it? Anyway, let's have a look. Broadcom is a global technology company which designs, develops, and supplies semiconductors and infrastructure software solutions. It operates through the semiconductor solutions and infrastructure um, segments. Show more. Yes, please. The semiconductor solution segment refers to product lines and intellectual property licensing. The infrastructure software segment relates to mainframe distributed and cybersecurity solutions and the FC uh, SAN um, business. The, um, the company was founded in 1961 decent history there, headquartered in Palo Alto, California, Avgo Broadcom, 1961, Palo Alto, California, and employees 20,000 exactly, not 20,001, 20,000. No one's going to hire you if you're <laughs> the next person. Right, Hock He Tan. Uh, if you'd like Hock He Tan on the show, we have a Meet the CEO series. Nothing like Bloomberg, rubbish, unscripted, as it is, as it happens. We simply uh, talk to the CEO. Would you like them on the show? We've had many on the show and many more planned. You can have Hock E. Tan on the show. I will never message them, sell my services, say, come on my show. It's great. Never do. But you can get them on the show. Go to Investor Relations, find the email, uh, contact Investor Relations, tell them that you're an investor. You'd love to learn more. We have a CEO, CEO series. Ask them to join me on the show. Build up a relationship. When they, are, when they come back to you uh, and uh, they're happy, then you can put them on to me. All right? That's how we do that. 
Margin requirements, uh, 25%. So it's regarded the same as the S&P 500. As low as it can go, there's no such thing as no risk, but it's the lowest possible. 22 uh, million average volume. No volume at all today. Interesting. On a day when we're going to get earnings. Interesting. Why is no one trading this? We'll discover as we go through. Dividend 1.33. Is the dividend any good? We'll look at that. If you've got a dividend and growth, you've got everything you need, right? Remember the difference between a growth stock and a dividend stock. We've already covered that. Uh, price earnings ratio, 65 times. So it's, um, I think it's uh, slightly cheaper than NVIDIA. Isn't NVIDIA 70 times? Something like that. Okay. Market cap, 717. So it's not quite a trillion dollar business yet. It's obviously smaller than NVIDIA. Uh, 52-week high, 185. 52-week low, 79.51. Uh, but generally trending upwards. Okay, let's look at the inside trading, but we're going to do it on a better view for you to provide a better service. Let's go down here and show you like this. What we're interested in is not Robert Hood investors. I don't really care what retail investors are doing. I care what hedge funds are doing, and I care what insiders are doing. Robert Hood investors are buying it. No surprise. They're just following the. They're just following uh, following the trends. No, no interest to that at all. Uh, I, I'm a Robert Hood investor. I get it, but I'm not interested in what they're doing. I'm interested in what the money is doing. Hedge funds. Uh, they're buying it. They're buying more of it than they're selling. Okay. What about insiders? Very important. Insiders have been selling, but that was back in October, long time ago, nearly a year ago. And the selling has been getting less and less and less. That's good. I don't then really need to go in because that looks like uninformative selling tax positions. I can see that by the amount it is. Uh, experience shows me that. I don't even need to go into it. I know it's uninformative. And just to prove that experience is everything, if we go in, there it is, uninformative selling. It's of no issue at all. Um, the CEO uh, did sell some, uh, and that's informative selling. Uh, shares uh, sold on the open market. Very, very different. So that is a little bit, but uh, look, 7,000 shares. It's, he, he, he probably wanted to... Uh, he probably wanted to get some uh, some money for, you know, his kid's birthday. I don't know. It's no big deal. Anyway, whatever. I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, let's look at uh, what Morningstar say. In fact, I don't care what Morningstar say. They're paid to say these things. So let's ignore that. Uh, economic moat wide. Yes, we know that. Fair value 155. We'll just we'll determine what the value is in a few moments. Uncertainty medium. That's, a, that's quite good to be classed as medium in this sector. I will tell you that. Exemplary is good. Uh, what about the earnings? Well, as you can see, uh, Wall Street don't seem to be very good at uh, doing Wall Street analysis on this stock. They tend to get it wrong quite a bit, actually. But the percentages are way off. But uh, in Q1 of 24, it was a huge beat compared to analyst uh, expectations. They did it in Q2 again. And let's see if we can do it in Q3 tonight after hours, if we can tonight. Of course, NVIDIA, it's all going to go up. And all this nonsense and baloney will be what it was. No, noise and waffle and load of rubbish. No surprise, uh, other investors are buying E Lilly, Nvidia, United Health, Qualcomm makes perfect sense. Paula Alto Networks uh, from the same place, uh, probably related. AMD, Taiwan Semiconductors, all good stuff. Nothing here, rubbish. All good solid companies. No Mullen, no scam stocks. Uh, JP Morgan Banks, I, I like that. So what we're showing here is very old money as well. Old school money, very reliable money. No Mullins, no FFIE, no GameStop, none of that rubbish, uh, which is great. So we like what we're seeing there so far. Good. All right, let's go and look at what's important, the numbers. So first of all, we're going to start off by looking at this. Please tap the like button if you like this. This is very important for NVIDIA earning uh, investors. So don't get bored if you go, well, I don't care about Broadcom. I'm you know, whatever. Let's have a look at this. Let's go back and look at the dividends. Have we got growth as well as dividends? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Here we go. So first of all, uh, go back as far as 2006. Um, this is pr you know, prior the big rally. We wasn't having any dividends. 
And what we're looking for is every single quarter. We don't want to miss and we want to see increasing all the time, which is great. If you add that to grow, if you've got the perfect stock, right? So here we go. You ready? Ready for the race? Let's do it. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 15, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 11. Now we dropped, sorry, 16, 17, 11. Yes, we dropped there. It was once. So it's no longer a dividend king. Dividend king is always paying, always increasing. All right? It's not perfect. Hasn't been going long enough anyway. But they had a dip. We don't want to see that. 11 cents. 19, 19, 21, 21, 23, 25, 12. We do get these little uh, little little drops, but hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. March, April. Okay, it can be forgiven. It's an extra dividend thrown in. We can forgive it. We're all good. All is forgiven at Qualcomm. Sorry, Broadcom. Qualcomm, I just talked about that. Broadcom, all is forgiven. Extra payment. So we're all good. We're still golden. We're still, we're still on the track for, for uh, Dividend King. 19, 19, 21, 23, 25, 25. Extra payment. We can live with it. 27, 27, 29, 32, 35, 14. Extra payments. So it's a Dividend King Plus. It's not, of course. It doesn't have the time. But this is very, 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 very good. 38, 38, 40, 42, 44, 16. Extra payment. Extra payment. I'm loving it. Extra payment. 49, 49, 50, 51, 102. 102 is expected in 2000. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Uh, that was paid out. Beg your pardon. 102, 18 extra payment. 102, 102, 102. Uh, 175, 175, 175. 265, 265, 265. 325, 325, 325. 360, 360. 410, 410, 460, 460. 525, 525, 525. We are loving it. Very, 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 very good. Excellent. Other than the time, but you can't. You know, you can't add time. It takes time to grow these things. Fantastic. What a great dividend result that is. 10 out of 10. Dividend King uh, Plus. Uh, Pro Plus Max, if you like, in the making. We like that. Very, very good indeed. What about the back test comparing to the S&P 500? How does it compare to the S&P 500? Well, if we put in 2015 $10,000 and reinvested all the dividends... What do we have? We have $211,000. Very nice indeed. On the S&P 500, you have a 3x32, which is none too shabby, but on uh, Broadcom, 211. Very nice. This is an alternative, of course, to NVIDIA. All right, 211. Very nice indeed. Uh, wasn't affected by COVID. There's the dip. It dipped the same, carried on going, accelerating, accelerating. Very nice indeed. Very stable. Very stable asset. Love it. No real volatility here. Stable. Very, very good uh, there. Now then, buy zone, sell zone, support zones. Here's the chart. Every Sunday on our show, on this channel, Sensei will do a, uh, a, a buy zone, sell zone, support zone, a personal chart for you. Here is the event. Join Sensei on Sunday. I'll give you the link right now for those watching in the live show. You can go and put your request in. You can see we've already got members, look, people joining all the time. Look at this. Fantastic. Uh, go and uh, for those of you that are watching live, there is the link in the chat. Those of you will watch it later. It will be below the video. Go and put your request in. Maybe you'd like Sensei to do, if you are a member, he does it for free. He will do a chart analysis for you, the buy zones, sell zones, for, for your order on, on Sunday, 3 p.m. Central. The time for the event is there in your time zone. You will see it. Okay, so make sure that you do that and you can get your free chart analysis done by Sensei on Sunday. Look at the news. Now then, this is our Seeking Alpha rate this. Now remember, I am a Seeking Alpha analyst. Doesn't mean I know everything. Uh, paid professional advisors get it wrong. Meet Kevin, financial advisor, gets it wrong all the time. So there's my Seeking Alpha. Uh, anyone watching the live show now can get a 25% discount and a trial. You might as well do that without my referral. You don't get the discount and you don't get the trial. So you might as well try it out. Right, uh, for those of you watching, remember... An analyst is purely somebody with an opinion who broadcasts. That's it. 
could talk rubbish. However, they're saying a buy. Oh, wait, it's, it's worth what it's worth. Wall Street are saying it's a buy. And Quant, the AI software at the AI technology at, at Seeking Alpha, says a hold. Great. No one's selling it. Brilliant. Very, very good. What about the factor grades? Valuation. Uh, D minus. It's a D minus from F. It's improving. Growth. B uh, from B, uh, profitability A plus just keeps going, uh, momentum A and uh, revisions B from B minus. That's moved up. So we're moving up, but we're already pretty immaculate anyway, but we're moving up there on the, uh, on the, on the factor grades. What about this? Why Broadcom should be earnings tonight? Why it's important? If they be earnings tonight, which they probably will, uh, it's good for NVIDIA. It's very good for NVIDIA and NVIDIA will, will rally after all of the nonsense. So make sure that you join us for the earnings tonight. Let's have a little look. Why should they beat earnings? Broadcom's Q2 24 results showed a 43% year-on-year sales increase and strong profitability, driven by AI-related revenue and VW uh, um, where contributions. Let's uh, preview Q3 results now. Management revised Q uh, f uh, for the uh, for the year 2024 outlook projects. Uh, over 40% top line growth with significant contributions from generative AI and software indicating potential margin expansion. The current Wall Street forecasts and recent news seem to provide a favorable environment for another earnings beat, in my view. This is this is a review of an analyst on, on NVIDIA. Sorry, on, uh, on, on Broadcom. I'm not going to read any more into that because that's just someone's opinion. We're going to look at the numbers for ourselves. So we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that for the moment. Uh, NVIDIA is now in bear territory. This was yesterday. And I'm bringing this in the analysis because it's important because of all the BS and the nonsense that came out of Bloomberg. Honestly, Bloomberg should lose their license as a as a news authority for that. Um, they deserve to be sued, to be quite honest. You know, just doesn't surprise me though. It's why I reported it was all rubbish. Nvidia is now in bear territory after three uh, three hundred uh, billion wipeout. Goldman Sachs. This was yesterday what they were saying. It's not in a bear market at all. It's not in a bear market. One day does not uh, does not suggest a bear market. Absolute nonsense. Following yesterday's decline that wiped out nearly 300 billion in market cap. The company is not worth 300 billion less. It's just trading less. That's all. It comes straight back up again. Makes no difference. It's now in a bear territory. No, it's not. It's not in a bear territory at all. A one day sell off does not mean it's in bear territory. Goldman Sachs knows better, but there you go. Talking rubbish. Goldman Sachs' trading desk said in a research note, Nvidia shares have declined 23% from the intraday high. Do you know what? It's a load of rubbish. I'm not even going to give you the time of day. It's not a bear market at all. It's not bear territory at all. It's rubbish. Manipulation, rubbish. Delete. City is still bullish on chips despite yesterday's sell-off. That's better. Of course, we're still bullish. There's no, there's no nonsense going on here. Uh, there's, it's, there's nothing wrong with the business. It's just nonsense. Absolute rubbish. Investment firm City said it's still bullish on the semiconductor space despite yesterday's crash in several stocks in the sector as data for July showed a continued resurgence in sales. Over the weekend, the semiconductor announced July month's uh, sales 48.7 billion down 10.8 month on month, slightly above our estimate of 48.4 uh, million. Uh, slightly uh, down 11.3% month and month, but, but but below seasonal seasonality of down 7.7% month on month due to seasonal uh, below seasonal units. City analyst Christopher Danley wrote in an, in an investor note with units down 19% in 2023, the worst correction since 2021. We believe there will be inventory replenishment in 2024. We remain. We maintain our 2024 semi-sales forecast of up 14% year on year. Okay, great. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, now, this is just reminds us, Avgo, their last earnings was a beat. Uh, 110 beat by 01 cent. Uh, the, ga the EPS gap actual was a beat of 4 cents, which was 44 cents. What are what are we expecting tonight? 
uh, 121 and gap of 56 cents. Um, and we're expecting a nice beat tonight. Let me get rid of that. Now let's look at the business. What's important? All right, let's go over to this. If you like this uh, type of review, honest and real, get rid of all the rubbish and the nonsense, tap the like button, please watch to the end and comment and leave me your thoughts and take the time. If you're an investor putting thousands of dollars of your hard earned money, spend 15, 20 minutes and watch the whole review. Otherwise, what the hell are you doing? All right. What about this? Uh, valuation. Valuation. Intrinsic valuation. 52% overvalued. According to this, there are no warnings. There's no DCF uh, valuation warning. This is a relative, this is the accurate, accurate uh, estimation. Any stock that has huge growth has an overvaluation because people are buying the future price. Will this continue to rise? Yes. Is AI just getting started? Yes. Is it all over? No. Is it going to $25 like an idiot said the other day in my show? No. Is it, are they all going to get subpoenaed and go bank? No. Rubbish. Nonsense. However, it's expensive. But it does come with a dividend, though. There are extra benefits to this stock. The dividend is great. It's a super dividend. Uh, it keeps increasing and adds extra ones as well. You can't get better than that. Um, but it is expensive. But best case scenario is 34%. It's getting better. And we are in a best case territory right now. With rates coming down, this, this is a booming industry. We are at the beginning of it, not the end, as some idiots will try to tell you. So it's still expensive though, but with the dividend, you can kind of add a little bit extra in. Worst case scenario, we're not in a worst case scenario at all. That is ridiculous. Right, look at the business. Let's look at the business. Last reported data we have, May. We're going to get the new one tonight. We're going to get the new one in after hours tonight. As you can see, we're expecting a big jump. Let me make it as clear as I can for you. It's up 10% and we're expecting a bit of an S-curve there. It does peter off. It's, it's still rising, but it's not a dramatic upturn. Now, what I like with this stock, unlike uh, our uh, super microcomputers who are being, uh, being accused of exaggerating, their estimates are very, very gradual. I like it. It's a solid business. It reminds me of Coca-Cola. Business as usual, steady rise, steady growth, good, good, uh, good dividend. It shows me that this company is being well managed. Not predicting explosive growth, even though it will probably get it. It's good. I like the the revenue. Good operating income dropped. Now expecting it to explode. This is great. Very very good. Net income down 12%, expecting the next, uh, uh, expecting the earnings tonight to report well. Financing cash flow down 10%. Uh, investing cash flow up 1%. That's a negative. Operating cash flow up 0.4%. Expect that to rise tonight. Okay, what about the business? Is it a good business? You're buying the balance sheet. Those of you who don't read balance sheets, 85% of our viewers said they don't. What are you doing? You buy the balance sheet. If you buy a car, you buy the, the title, you buy the legal document, you buy the balance sheet. When you buy a business, you buy their cash, their debts, and you need to know what the hell they've got. Otherwise, what the hell are you buying? You're guessing. 175 billion in assets, 105 liabilities. Great. Good ratio between the two. We like that. Cash, 9 billion. Good. They got cash, but not too much cash. We like the ratio, 9.8. Liabilities, bearing in mind they've got 9.8 billion in cash. Long-term debt, 71 billion. Ouch, lots of debt. 71 billion is their long-term debt. Now they can pay off nine of it, nearly 10 of it. That still leaves 71 billion. A lot of debt, don't like that, not good. However, and that, and that makes up 68% of their, of their liabilities. They've obviously been investing, building out the business, and now they've got to make some profit. So that is a negative, definitely a negative. But 
Interest rates are coming down and they're going to come down half a percent in a week or so's time. We're going to cover the show live. You don't want to miss that. It's the quote, it's the Broadcom NVIDIA event of the century. The first in three years to bring rates down. You can't miss it. Uh, I'll give you the link for that above my head as well and below in the description. Uh, the FOMC report, everyone's going to watch it. I'm expecting 40,000 people to watch me live with the biggest, the biggest viewing audience in the world um, um, in relationship to my subscribers. By far. Uh, okay, long-term debt, 68%. Not good. However, rates coming down, major catalyst. Half a percent this month, half a percent October, half a percent November, half a percent uh, December. Sorry, not half a percent, I beg your pardon. Quarter of a percent, beg your pardon. 025 in all of those months. So that's going to be a big catalyst for these people, uh, this business, because these people... These people, these people. Um, so uh, anyway, that's good. That's good. I don't like the debt, but I see the growth. I see the rates coming down. Um, this is a solid business. You know, some businesses do have a lot of debt. Uh, I can live with it on this one. A gross margin, 65%. Great. Operating margin, 34%. I don't think that's as good. Remember 65 and 34. 65, 34. NVDA. Is NVIDIA better? What did I say? 65 and 34? 65 and 34? 65 and 34? Yeah, thought so. NVIDIA, much, much better. Much, much better. No one competes with NVIDIA. All right? Way ahead. There you go. But with this company, you have that very attractive dividend. Why would you want this company over NVIDIA? I don't know if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. If you're in your 50s and you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you might now want a passive paying dividend stock with growth. You've got the best of both worlds. I don't need a passive income. I don't need any, any income. My income is, is YouTube. Right now, I don't need an income. When you're younger, you grow a portfolio, get as much as you can, and then you buy a high paying dividend stock. Then you move into high paying dividend stocks. You don't need a dividend stock if you're not taking any money out. But we did notice when we reviewed this at the beginning, we had uh, some people that own banks. Um, and that tells me we have old money, which is great, which is, which is stability. They're people that just want passive income. For a young person, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50, you don't need a passive income. Do you? I mean, do you? I mean, I would rather have growth, but with this, you get both. So the margins are slightly lower. Anyway, operating margin, net margin, 24, uh, FCF margin, 43%, 13% ROCE, 12% ROIC, ROA, 8% ROE, 22%, uh, free cash flow, uh, 18 point oh, we don't need that. Don't need that information. Scrolling on down, scrolling on down. Right, here we go. Profitability, 75%. Very, very, very good. I don't think it's quite as good as, well, we know it's not as good as as, uh, as NVIDIA, but very. I think 86 is profitability for NVIDIA. 75, excellent. Making tons of profit. Fantastic. 47%. Now, you see what I mean? Remember I said to you, I don't mind with this company. Huge amount of debt for this company is not the same as it is for a rubbish company. It's a great company business. So their solvency score isn't obliterated by that debt position. It's manageable. Manageable is okay. And 47%, again, experience, I'm seeing this live with you. I didn't know that would say 47%. And that's quite good. You're not going bankrupt. That debt is not an issue. And with rates coming down, it's a catalyst for growth, profitability, and solvency score increasing. So, like I said, I wasn't worried about it, and there is the evidence that I don't need to be worried about it. Now, despite it being expensive, which it is, 2% worst case scenario, downside, sorry, upside. So you're not losing money, even if it's expensive, are you? If it does well on earnings tonight, it'll go up again. There'll be a profit taking, yeah, 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 whatever, but it will go up again. 28% outperforming the S&P. Very nice indeed. What about the highest? 63%. And we are, we are definitely in this territory. So that looks very, very good for Avgo as well. What about short interest? Well, if it's too expensive, there should be loads of short interest. Oh, there's not. No surprise. You don't short this stock. You, you're stupid if you do. 
Uh, I'm not being funny. You're stupid, right? Great business, great people building a great business. You're you're at home on your computer thinking you know better, sat on the toilet on your Robin Hood thinking, I'm going to short this. I know more than they do. Good luck with that. No short squeeze. It ain't going to short squeeze and it ain't going to go down. Short as you're wasting your time. You lose your money. Forget it. Don't bother. Waste of time. All right, let's go. We looked at the um, the de decreasing selling from investors. We, we, we saw that. Sorry, insiders. We saw that. Uh, two days ago, Yahoo Finance. Have they got anything to add to the party? I'll listen in for the first few seconds. See what they have to say. Shares of NVIDIA hitting a three-week low to kick off the month this morning. This comes amid broader pressure on the chip sector following those NVIDIA earnings. No, rubbish. Not going to do that. They're talking about the, the stock of NVIDIA going down. We're not going to cover that because that will be out of date nonsense all around the Bloomberg nonsense. I haven't got time to waste your time. All right. So we're not going to cover that. Right. So there is my opinion of broad, a broad, uh, Broadcom Avgo. It's a great business. It's a solid business. It's going to go up. It's going to beat earnings. It's going to take broad, broad come up. It's going to take NVIDIA up. It's going to finally crush the nonsense that started this whole debacle a few days ago from Bloomberg. Bloomberg should be embarrassed. They won't. They don't care. They care about subscribers and numbers and stuff like that. They don't care. They don't, they don't talk to their audience live like I do with you. They don't care. They should care, though, but they don't. Click above my head for all the links down below in the description uh, for Seeking Alpha, Alpha Spread as well. If you liked the review I was doing using my Alpha Spread, all my members, I know the CEO. And personally, I speak to him uh, every other day on, a, on an email. There is Alpha Spread. All my reviews make their way onto Alpha Spread. Go and have a look. You'll see my reviews there. And, uh, and so on and so forth. There's the link. You can get a free plan or a 10% discount, which basically makes my membership for free. It is the best discount. No one can offer a best discount from that. If anyone offers me a better deal, I don't uh, do a deal with anyone, period. Can't pay me to do it. All right. So click above my head for all the links down below in the description. Uh, also in the description, you will find uh, the end video. I'm sick of it video. There are two. I've just done it explaining all the nonsense with Bloomberg and all of this sector being driven down just to sell videos, just to sell press, news, airtime. God knows what else. I just think it's ridiculous. Um, and also... Um, the link to the event itself tonight. Over here is the Broadcom event. Now, if, if you are an investor in AI, chips, NVIDIA, Broadcom, you need to watch this event tonight. You cannot afford to miss this. Live after hours, Broadcom, we're going to learn more about the business and where AI is going and some reaction, I'm sure, to the last few days' uh, volatility. Down here, I shall put the Broadcom... Um, what shall I put down here? Broadcom playlist, Broadcom playlist, no, I've just done Broadcom for the first time. So no Broadcom playlist, I'll put the NVIDIA playlist, which will give you the latest information on NVIDIA related to Broadcom. I think that's going to be more useful as I haven't yet done a Broadcom playlist. All right, kind of makes sense really. If there's not a playlist, why show it? All right, makes sense, right? It would only be this video, in it? Kind of pointless, you just watched it. Makes sense? Makes sense. I'll do that. All right, there you go. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.